Hello there. Good evening and welcome to the Nisa. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. We start the bulletin in Kaduna where the Vice President Kashim Shatima has assured that the federal government will probe the error bombing by the Nigerian army that led to the death of hundreds of residents at Tudumbiri village in Igabi local government era of Kaduna state and punish anyone found guilty. Now the Vice President gave the assurance during a visit to the victims of the attack at the Baro Diko Tijin Hospital in Kaduna. Bello Musa has more on the visit. Shortly after arriving in Kaduna, the Vice President and his entourage visited the victims of the drone attack at Tudimbiri who are receiving treatment at the Baro Diko Tijin Hospital. <laughs> After sympathizing with the victims, the vice president reiterated the federal government's commitment to investigate the incident. All measures will be taken to ensure that future occurrences are averted. And most importantly, the government will go to the root of the issue and if anyone is found culpable will be punished accordingly. The government is fully committed towards completely eradicating banditry and armed kidnapping. At the Sarkashim Ibrahim House, the Vice President met with religious and traditional leaders to console them over the loss of lives during the ugly incident. The President approved the commencement of the Pulaku Initiative by next month. Actually, our intent was to keep up the program in Sokoto. But in the light of recent development, the president directed that the Pulaku initiative should be kick-started here in Kaduna State. <laughs> and Tudimbiri will be the best beneficiary. We are going to build houses, clinics, schools, veterinary clinics, empowerment initiatives, solar energy. It's a complete package of solutions. It's a non kinetic response <coughs> to the problems of banditry and kidnapping in the North. Members of Tidimbiri community, Jamaat Nusrul Islam, and the Christian Association of Nigeria emphasize the need for a government to avert a recurrence of such incidents. Kaduna State Governor Obasani assured of the state government's support for the victims. On our part, the Kaduna State government will do everything to ensure that uh, we look after those in the hospitals, we provide medical uh, care for them, we pay for all their bills, and even those that have lost their parents, I mean the orphans there who have children, the Kanosta government will also look at them and uh, cater for them, support them. The army drone attack which occurred on Sunday killed at least eight five members of Tudimbiri community, leaving several others injured. Bella Musa. Trust TV in Iskaduna. Apologies for the distressing images in that report. Well, still in connection with uh, the bombing in Kaduna, the United States on Thursday says it is ready to help the Nigerian military in the areas of reducing the incidence of accidental bombings to the barest minimum in the country if allowed to intervene. The United States says it will help in the area of deployment of artificial intelligence to improve the military's capabilities, saying the measure would afford the Nigerian military avoid running afoul of international humanitarian law. Now, the United States Bureau of Arms Control, Deterrence and Stability stated this in Abuja while fielding questions from select journalists at a roundtable media chart. Speaking during the chart, the center's principal deputy assistant secretary, Paul Dean, says... His organization is willing to partner with the federal government of Nigeria to curb the proliferation of arms and ammunition in the country. The U.S. official maintains that adoption of technology would make operations predictable, transparent, stable and responsible, which he said would reduce the risk of irresponsible approach. Staying with security, bandits have demanded for two brand new motorcycles after collecting the sum of 10 million naira as ransom from families of 19 abducted victims before they will be set free at Kudiri village 
of Kagarko local government era in Kaduna State. According to Daily Trust City and Crime Report, the bandits on October 30th invaded Kuderi village in Kagarko area of Kaduna State and whisked away 23 villages, including two children and a pastor in the community. However, four among the kidnapped victims have managed to escape captivity. Speaking to newsmen, one of the relatives says the bandits' leader had insisted that the victim's family must purchase two new motorcycles to secure the release of their family members. The village chief of Kudiri, Wakili Ilyasu, has confirmed the payment of 10 million naira ransom to the bandits. He also appealed to the relevant security agencies to come to the aid of the community and rescue their family members while requesting the setup of a military base in the area. There was no official confirmation or comment from the spokesperson of the Kaduna State Police Command over the incident. Now, gunmen believed to be bandits on Wednesday stormed Gandu community and kidnapped 10 students of the Federal University of Lafia. A resident living within the community informed Trust TV that the gunmen stormed the area and started shooting sporadically but retreated after citing security operatives. According to the source, the gunmen resurfaced later at Gandu, a student's community op opposite the permanent site of the university, abducting five students. Confirming the incident, the public relations officer of the university, Abu Bakr Ibrahim, explained that the total number of students abducted is yet to be ascertained. Meanwhile, students of the university had embarked on a peaceful protest demanding an end to the persistent kidnappings of students of the university. The Shiroro Hydroelectric Power Dam in Niger State is at risk of a takeover by bandits, according to the Transmission Company of Nigeria. The regional general manager of the TCN, Mewada Sarikimbello, disclosed this during an address to journalists on the security threats facing the dam. Abu Bakar Akwati has more. The Shiroro region of Transmission Company of Nigeria covers Shiroro power station with transmission stations at Jeba, Gusapi, Kainji, as well as Kontogora to Yauri, KB State. The regional general manager, Mayweather Sariki Bello Paiko, said bandits had not allowed proper maintenance of transmission lines from Shiroro to Kaduna, Gogolada, as well as Shiroro to Tegina lines over the years. One of my staff was picked by these bandits. Uh, it takes a lot of effort for them to lose but honestly, I think he spent almost three months with them before he could be released. But the worst case we faced was when we had problem with our Shiroro Kaduna line. We sent our linesmen. They went there with securities to go and address that issue. Unfortunately, they were ambushed by these bandits. I think they killed about three police officers or two there about. Uh, but as God we have it, all our staffs were saved. I think that is the worst incident we have ever faced. And honestly, because of that, we could not afford to risk sending our staffs on these lines again. Because whenever an issue come up, usually, we request, in fact, we have to table this issue to our headquarters. The headquarters move in. The presidency send a military task force in which they are here with us constantly to safeguard the staffs. Because these people keep on threatening that they want to come in and take over this place. We have the marine police, they are running on the water. We have the DSS. We still have the El Abidoka. At least to deter them away from coming to take over this place. For because their aim is to destroy this dam. Paiko said vandalization of electrical facilities was also a challenge to stable electricity generation, transmission, and distribution of power to Nigerians. He said the transmission company of Nigeria had always taken proactive measures to ensure that the electricity was always transmitted to the final distributors at the right time. Abakar Akote, Trust TV News, Mena. 
Now, the narrow scarcity that is fast becoming a major concern for Nigerians is disrupting business activities in parts of the Federal Capital Territory. As the Central Bank of Nigeria continues to reassure citizens of adequate supply, POS operators who now play a significant role in the supply chain say uncertainty in the system is worsening the situation, leading to more shortages of the Nara in circulation. Zainab Karai has more. While most residents who spoke to Trust TV say the situation is not severe in the FCT, it is beginning to look like a long-term challenge as they experience restrictions when trying to get access to cash either through the banks or point-of-sale operators. Of course, as I am right now, I'm very, very angry. I just went to my bank this morning. I wanted to withdraw about 40,000 naira, and they are giving me 5,000 naira. And I need like that 40,000 to use it for something. So I talked to the bank manager and he was telling me that there is nothing they can do. It's only 5,000 they are giving. No matter how electronic we may try to go, cash is still very, very important. Because you can go to a petty trader and say, I want to make a transfer of 200 naira or 300 naira to you. They won't take it. Even transporters. Transporters that were paying 500, 1,000, they don't take transfer. You have to give them cash. Since last week now, we've experiencing cashless. So we'll go to the bank to get money for the business. They'll say that there's no cash. The next day we'll go back. They say that they cannot give more than 150 and all those, you know. So we'll be stressing ourselves, going to towns, but still yet. For POS operators in the FCT, they are compelled to ration the limited cash in supply to maximize their business operations, adding that charges for transactions have not been affected by the narrow scarcity. Like this morning, I went to a POS merchant to get cash and not only me, others. So the guy was telling us that banks are not dispensing, so I don't really know what's going on. I feel like it's because these banks, sometimes they are not reliable. Sometimes when you want to make transfer, you see that it's, it's unsuccessful and they don't, you know, retrieve it or return it to you till like days later. Many Nigerians remain concerned but optimistic ahead of the Yuletide season, with many expecting the CBN to address the factors responsible for the Naira scarcity. Zainab Garai, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now, a federal high court in Abuja has issued a Ghanishi order freezing a total of 24 bank accounts belonging to the Kano state government. The order was granted in response to a suit filed by the incorporated trustees of Masalachi Eat Shop Owners and Traders Association. Now, the association sought compensation for the, demoli for the demolition of their shops, which they deemed illegal and unjust. Justice Iyang Oyeko, presiding over the case, delivered the ruling on November 28, 2023, affirming the attachment of funds totaling 30 billion naira. According to the certified true copy of the ruling signed by the registrar, Chioma Chijoke, the action is aimed at satisfying the judgment in favor of the shop owners following the alleged illegal demolition carried out by the state government back in June this year. Now, the judge also stipulated that the judgment, the judgment creditors should serve the defendants and garnishes at least 14 days prior to the next hearing scheduled for 18th of January 2024. Same with that story, Council for Incorporated Trustees of Masalachi Edi Shop Owners and Traders Association Nuruddin Ayagi says the Ganeshi order issued by the Federal High Court freezing funds of the Kano State Government in 24 banks, including the Central Bank, does not permit the state government to have access to funds in its accounts. Justice Simon Amobeda of the Federal High Court in Kano had on September 29 ordered Kano State Government to pay 30 billion naira compensation to shop owners whose properties were demolished at Koformata Idi Praying Ground or Eat Praying Ground. Now, Justice Iyayako of the Federal High Court Abuja also granted a Ganeshi order on November 28, freezing the accounts of the Kano State Government in satisfaction of the judgment of Justice Amobeda. Aagi said, at the moment, the order is subsisting. He added that for now, the state government cannot access funds as the banks are now not allowed to permit the government of Kano State any dealing with monies in those accounts, including the monies that will come in the future. And the state accountant general 
of uh, Kano State, Abdul Qadir Abdul Salam, was contacted for comments on how the state government will run its affairs and pay workers' salaries. He says inquiries on the court order should be directed to the office of the state solicitor general, who also asked property, or rather reporters, to ask the attorney general and the commissioner for justice for comments on the matter. The Zamfara State government says it has recovered about 50 operational vehicles allegedly taken away by the immediate past governor of the state, Bello Motowale. Briefing journalists on Thursday in Gusau, the Zamfara State capital, a spokesperson for Governor Dauda Lawal, Saini Sambu, said the action followed the judgment by a federal high court in Sokoto last week Friday. He said due process was carefully followed to recover the vehicles from Gusau and Maradun residents of the former governor who had earlier denied having possession of any government property when he was leaving office as governor. Now, security agencies later raided the two residents of former Governor Motowale in Gusau and Maradun local government areas where some vehicles were recovered. The former governor quickly secured a court order restraining the state government from such actions pending the termination of the court's decision on the matter. Well, you're watching the news are uh, on Trust TV. Coming up ahead, mixed reactions over the impact of Nigeria's education sector on national development. Details of this and many more stories coming up ahead after the break. A dark trade is thriving here in the heart of Mararaba a bustling satellite town that stretches into Nigeria's federal capital territory. There is one business for town. When say Abuja, they did do kidney arrest. Abbas is one of at least six young men from Mararaba that have followed this dangerous path. One of my friends called me and, exp and told me that there is one hospital that they used to sell kidney. Selling organ is illegal, is unethical. The repercussions are many. One on the donor himself. They come out like a camayaro, koshi nega ya makaya naso. They come out like a dokiyaro, ba shower and yai. To enzida das mutu, zai zuba dega wachin suke na. I no want me to bury my son. I want them to bury me. But as this thing happen, are they looking like just like ordinary picture? The investigation is yet to be concluded. The motive for the donation was money. And when they get the money, and the money will not be able to solve their problems, they ended up with regret. Most of them developed psychological issues. Some of them even got into depression. Welcome back to the news and thank you very much for staying with us. Here's a quick reminder of our top stories. Vice President Kashim Shatima visits Kaduna days after tragic bombing incident. Narrow scarcity unsettles Abuja residents as Yulitite season approaches. Nigeria's economy is experiencing a sluggish recovery as the government struggles to keep millions of small scale businesses in operation under the current economic climate. The government is now calling on marketing and communication professionals to serve as catalysts for socioeconomic transformation of the country as the government targets one million small-scale businesses for empowerment. Trust TV's Shafiu Suleiman reports. As Nigeria's federal government continues to troubleshoot the economy, 
This gathering presents an opportunity to deliberate on critical issues that will add value to national discourse. Represented by the Director General National Orientation Agency, Lare Isa Onilu, the minister highlighted reforms aimed at encouraging and strengthening small and medium enterprises in the country by the Bolatinabu administration, which he says requires support of the marketing communications professionals to succeed. We need your creative solutions and approaches. We need your unparalleled network. We need your platform. This is not about propaganda or noise making. No, instead, it is about enlightenment, sensitization, about opening the eyes of Nigerians to see the various economic opportunities emerging around them. Economic experts who spoke on the theme of the conference, marketing communications as an enabler for national transformation, identified missing links in the government fiscal governance trajectory needed to achieving the objectives of transforming the business environment. When we ask the Nigerian people, what would the government do to make you change your mind and think differently about your country? The individual said, they take care of us from education and health care. Just imagine that. It's impossible to carry society along to, and say, bite the bullets, make the difficult sacrifices, and they see their leaders still you know, on um, spending sprees that reflect that there is no sensibility to how people feel and what people are going through. While acknowledging some early signs of economic recovery, the panelists prepared solutions that could supercharge Nigeria's sluggish economic growth. If you spend 500 billion and you say you are going to alleviate my suffering, and I want to ask who did you give? You can't tell me who did, how you identify the poor. You can't tell me the poor you alleviated their suffering. And if we ask the poor, raise your hand that you have been alleviated to a small degree. Everybody's hands are down. Then you create a complex situation where there is no ethos. And the Nigeria we want is the Nigeria where economic reforms are people-centered. When they come with pains, we must react very quickly and show empathy for our people. The conference is coming on the heels of ambitious trillion dollar economy target of the President Bola Tinubu administration, anchored on ensuring macroeconomic stability, enhanced food security, jobs creation, improved investments in social security, amongst others, which experts say can only be realized through fiscal financial discipline and accountability in governance. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now the Food and Agriculture Organization says 26.5 million Nigerians face food crisis as poverty surges in the country, leaving many households unable to make ends meet due to the current economic climate, which has seen record-breaking food inflation. In this report, Trust TV's Idris Jabrin takes a look at Nigeria's quest to attain food security. His report is presented from our studio. With Nigeria already battling endemic poverty and hunger, the Food and Agriculture Organization say an estimated 25 million Nigerians are currently food unsecured. The figure is expected to rise to 26.5 million in the coming year. Poverty and climate change, persistent violence in Nigeria's northeast, armed banditry and kidnapping in the northwest are believed to be the major contributory factors to Nigeria's food insecurity. Food security is a core issue in development of uh, people in Nigeria, not only in Nigeria, but the world over. So Kano State Government is really trying to partner, like I said, with different stakeholders, especially donor, and, uh, donor agencies, in ensuring that food is made available to the people of the state. You know, Kano State is the highest state uh, with the highest population in Nigeria. We are talking about about 20 million people. And uh, God so kind, Kano State is blessed with that 75% of this population are actively engaged in agricultural value chain. This is the Wano Grain Market in Kano. It is one of the largest grain markets in Africa. A struck lots of food items are transported from this market to different parts of the world. 
but despite the availability of the grains and other food items, Nigerians are compelled to buy food at exorbitant prices. Maize is now sold at 44, 43,000 naira per pack, which is very difficult for the poor man to afford. According to this expert, who recently met in Kano to brainstorm on the challenges and possible solutions, achieving food security in Nigeria requires investment in sustainable agricultural prices. Supporting smallholder farmers in rural farming communities, as well as encouraging dry land agriculture, among other interventions. So an agricultural development project in which is now focusing on production, especially climate resilient crop and especially nutrition sensitive crops. We expect that the farmers will have improved incomes, there will be improved food security, both for the farming families as well as the country. We expect there will be improvement in nutritional values at the household level. We also expect that there will be climate resilient production, especially in this northern environment where we are facing a lot of climate hazards. President Tinibu recently declared a state of emergency on the nation's food crisis. But for most Nigerians, the declaration has done little to change the trajectory of food insecurity as millions remain at risk of hunger. To politics now, the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, has accused the opposition political parties in Kogi State who lost the governorship election in the state of deploying undemocratic means to ventilate their loss at the polls. Addressing a news conference at the party's secretariat, its National Publicity Secretary Felix Morka tasked security agencies in the state to tackle all threats to peace while calling on political stakeholders to look for legitimate means to seek redress. Shafi Suleiman reports. The political battle may be over, but the tensions in Kogi State in the aftermath of the governorship election remains palpable. Series of attacks have been recorded just weeks after Kogi State alongside Emo and Bialsa took part in the upcycle governorship elections on November 11 this year. The APC is now alleging a calculated attempt by political actors to destabilize the polity in the state. People of Kogi State deserve their peace. Those who contested the election have an avenue for venting their grievances. They should do so. We've seen the attack on the INEC resident uh, commissioner in Kogi State. We've also seen the alleged attack on the uh, secretary of the tribunal in Kogi State. Now, the police has issued a statement recently, which we welcome, saying that they have launched an investigation into these incidents. We implore them to thoroughly and expeditiously investigate these circumstances in order to do what the law requires, which is to bring the perpetrators of these violent acts to justice. While acknowledging the rights of the opposition candidates to seek redress through democratic means, the APC says security agencies in Kogi State must be alive to their responsibility of maintaining the peace in the face of threats capable of undermining the fragile peace in the state. We as the ruling party, we're also unhappy with a lot of outcomes with the elections that, that happened. But as I said, our reaction is not what you've seen uh, the opposition react. This idea that I didn't win, therefore everything must come down. If we do that every time somebody loses an election, then we will never have a country or even a democracy uh, to call our own. So I think that uh, we today will like to call on the opposition in Kogi State and elsewhere for that matter to follow democratic process. If you choose to go to court, it's your freedom to go to court. Do so and allow your opponents too to also express themselves legally within the context of the case you brought. The APC, while acknowledging the imperfections of the elections, is reputing claims that it is responsible for political attacks in the state as they challenge the opposition to provide evidence of culpability. 
APC Susman Dodo won the keenly contested election by a landslide victory to defeat his closest rivals Murtala Ajaka and Dino Malai of the STP and PDP respectively. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now, three operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have been injured with one left in critical condition after sustaining a gunshot injury to the head. The incident happened in the early hours of Monday, December 4th, during an operation at the Opuje Forest in Edo State. The affected officers were rushed to the hospital for treatment, while the critically injured personnel had a major surgery on Wednesday. Some of the vehicles used for the operation were riddled with bullets. Following credible intelligence, the drug cartels had again stocked their warehouses in a forest to start distribution of the psychoactive substance to various parts of the country ahead of the Yuletide season. Teams of NDLA personnel were mobilized to enter the Edo forest and block the distribution of illicit drugs by destroying their warehouses. And the director of media and advocacy of the NDLEA, Femi Baba Femi, on Thursday stated that some of the warehouses contained about 6,000 kilograms of cannabis were first taken down in Ujogba Forest in a Sunwest local government area of the state last week. Is what we are trying to look, uh, to look at and try to see how we can avoid it. So, what do you think we should do? What do you think we should do? Every cell! Right now, stakeholders in Nigeria's security sector have called for the decentralization of Nigeria's policing architecture to ensure better service delivery and enhance security in the country. They made the call while speaking to Trust TV in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital, on the need for effective security during the Yuletide season. The report. Security remains one of the major rights of every citizens of the country, as this is spelled out in Section 14 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. With insecurity spreading across the country, security experts believe the country should decentralize its policing system for greater efficiency vis-à-vis -vis the introduction of intelligence-driven approaches and legalizing the use of hams by registered local security operators. Then what we have in this country, having a centralized policing system is an aberration. It means that this centralized system needs to be decentralized so that other levels of government I mean, the state, let's start from the subnational, which is the state, should have their own world, should have their own policing system. You look at this new trend of insecurity in the country, then you understand that to actually be able to cope with the current trend of insecurity in Nigeria, there's need for a new approach. And like we all know, across the world, the world is now going intelligence-driven uh, uh, policing. Strong problem, strong approach. So there's nothing but if local security are equipped with uh, weapons so as to make them more functional. The special advisor on security to Oyo State Governor Sunday Udukoya says government has begun registration of its public motorcyclists as a way of curbing criminal activities by operators, adding that government will continue to invest in the security sector of the state to endanger socio-economic development. So the governor has invested so much on security just of recent he had meetings with even rank and file in the police even his uh, corporal constable down to the the, the the commissioner he had meetings with them he asked them for their needs he gave all the area commanders vehicle and there's more effort now, he's still planning to get more for the divisions again. What they need crime is a way people are looking to meet their needs. And that's the key. The technology will understand that what people what led people to crime is because they want to meet their needs. And I want to plead with people that at all that please despite all this end of the year, 
Whenever you cannot achieve this thing, the fact you have a life, there's a hope for a living done and a dead life. Please be calm. God will do it for you. Special advisor to Oyo State Governor advised Nigerians to shun practices that are counterproductive as the year is winding down, he called for patience and contentment for a safe and exciting festive season. Now, the Academic Staff Union of Universities on Thursday says Nigeria is in deep crisis following the migration of academics from Nigeria to other countries. The union also called for more investment in the education system in the country while calling on budgeting agencies to separate the budget of the Tashu Education Trust Fund from Nigeria's annual budget to enable effective implementation of the process. Now, ASU President Professor Emmanuel Osodoke made the call at the Tetwan Alliance for Innovative Research a showcase and closing event held on Thursday in Abuja. The ASU pre president, who spoke against the backdrop of suspicion that the national budget may not enjoy 100%, also observed that strangely, for the first time, the government has decided to add Tetfund's budget to the national budget. Osodeke decried the continuous patronage of foreign goods and services by Nigerians, even when they can be sourced locally. Now, the economic climate in Nigeria has continued to generate public reactions from residents across Benue State. The state of the nation has stimulated recurring conversations around the impact of the education system in adding value to national development. Jimmy Azande reports. With the growing number of graduates churned out of Nigerian universities on a yearly basis, residents have questioned the extent to which formal education has impacted the economic trajectory of Nigeria. We have people questioning whether universities or training institutions are doing enough or not. I think uh, the training institutions, the tertiary institutions are doing enough. The only thing is that they do not have places where they can operate. They can apply their skills. The introduction of entrepreneurship studies in the university curriculum was meant to encourage self-employment, as explained by some of the students. My experience during the APIs, let me say, I thank God for everything. It was, it's such a great thing for the APIs because many of us use that as a time to go out of uh, class, class alone, going to the normal, uh, to the uh, entrepreneurial world, learning new things, learning about uh, having new experiences and there was a lot of finances involved but uh, I think it is worth it. There is also the argument that lack of political willpower is not encouraging private sector initiatives. Government is not encouraging businesses. You know, you start up a small business and as you are starting, you have so many group of persons coming up with uh, claiming uh, so many uh, tax rights over you. And also, some persons are incapacitated, you know, because of uh, financial resources. Because for individuals to operate, they need some finances. We are operating or we are part of the international market now. So whatever we're putting out there should be something that has value. Presently, Nigeria exports crude oil. No value is added to it. As you can see, we don't, we've lost the refining capacity. So we can't earn in dollars. We need to start earning in dollars for this particular kind of inflation to go down. It is left to be seen how the economic aspect of the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinubu will address concerns around education and economic development. Jimmy Azande, Trust TV News, Makodi. Well, staying with education and circling back to the comments by the ASU president on the dire situation in the education system with lecturers migrating out of the country due to the current situation uh, of uh, the state of affairs in education. We have with us uh, via Zoom, ASU Chairman, Modibo Adama University, Yola, Dr. Jibril El Maudi, join us to interrogate some of the issues raised by the national president of ASU. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us uh, on the news hour. First of all, let's, let's understand uh, the like scale of this. Situation. It's my pleasure being with you. How, 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 how critical is it? Are, are lecturers really abandoning and jumping the ship 
uh, in search of greener pastures? Surely, um, uh, it, it, we have no any other option than to to start uh, quitting with dignity, because we have done our best to the Nigerian education system, but nobody is seeing that. The government is not willing to see that. Parents are not willing to see that. Even the students that we are teaching, that we are suffering because of, are also not willing to see that uh, we are doing our best to ensure that we celebrate the education system. Go ahead, doctor. I can hear you. Okay, so it is it is truly a lot of people are quitting, a lot of people are leaving the system, a lot of people are are going somewhere else where the, their services is needed. You cannot stay where you are doing your best, but nobody is seeing that. Uh, to the extent that uh, feeding your family is becoming a problem, and when you don't have a mind that is settled, that you cannot think critically, you cannot feed your family, let alone going to teach students. It's only when you have a stable mind, your family is intact, before you begin to think of how to create, I mean, have initiative, critical thinking, and go to in class, and impact on students. Mm. We have been battling with city government, years in, years out. We have started agreeing with them since 2009. Unfortunately, government has been reneging, and nobody is seeing that. Instead of people to force government to do the full, but issue of revitalization, our one academic allowance, Government is now behind him, is 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 hiding behind the eight month salary. Our members can forfeit that eight month salaries. However, people should know that eight month salary that the government is refusing to, to give us. We have worked for more than eight months. We have finished our first semester. We have finished our second semester. We have started another semester. So if, even if even if government is not paying us about our 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 salaries, government should pay us our backlog of an academic allowance. The issue of revitalization. The last time government reviewed our salary was 2009. And in that 2009 agreement, we've all agreed that virtually at the end of every four or five years, our salary should be reviewed. This is 2023. From 2009, nobody's talking about the review. So people should go. People should leave this country. People should go to places where their services are needed. America is looking for us. Ghana, everywhere. Where we have standard universities are uh, inviting us to come and begin to teach there so that people will be respecting you. How will you feel the say Nigeria is the least paid uh, in the academics globally where you see uh, a professor at bar, professor that has professorship for the first 10 years and in less than 400,000 naira after all elections. What can he buy with that? Can he make critical thinking? Can he make innovations? Can he bring something tangible that he can compete with other professors globally? Go to Ghana, go to other countries, go to Kenya, go to Mozambique, Malawi, where the professors are earning 1.5, 1.72 million naira. That is the that is the African average, but that cannot be given in Nigeria, right. and it's very very unfortunate. Okay, uh, doctor, let's let's balance it with uh, others who also say that as much as uh, the welfare situation is uh, deplorable uh, in our universities uh, with regards to lecturers' welfare. Uh, there's also a sense that uh, redundancy is at a significant level where there are some of the lecturers uh, who, you know, have very few uh, in, in, in between uh, services that they offer across our universities. That as much as people are living, there are those who are still redundant within the system. Uh, how true is that? I beg to, I beg to, to disagree with, you, with this wrong situation that uh, there are redundant people in the university. There's no redundancy. You can only be running where there's no work. People that are teaching more than where you're supposed to be teaching 50, uh, 20 students, 50 students, you'll be teaching 300 students. How can that be redundancy? We are teaching 300 students, 400 students, sometimes 1,000 students. Where you're supposed to be teaching uh, 10, 20 people. How can that be redundancy? There's nothing like redundancy. There are a lot of work. There are a lot of people who want to go to university. There are a lot of so many things in universities. Okay. People are being overworked. And that was the reason why. Uh, government bring, bring the issue of an academic allowance because we are overworking ourselves. There's the issue of high rate of brain drain. People are dying. People are people cannot. There's a serious problem. So I don't want to agree for one minute that we have the issue of redundancy in our universities. Government should work up for its responsibility. And uh, as, as I keep saying, there's no one country you go in this world where you not see Nigerian excelling. Some of Nigerians are head of departments outside there. Some of them are vice solos. So if there is redundant, we are redundant, it's not true. It's because government is not doing to do the right thing. Once government decides to do the right thing, then everybody will fall apart. 
and we begin to do the right necessary thing for us for our universities okay uh, just on a final note there are some who have accused certain lecturers who are now comfortably living abroad after using government resources for instance ted for funding to study abroad to gain more experience more knowledge acquire more certificates but then refuse to come back uh, and speak uh, ill about uh, the system back home what do you have to say regarding uh, those who practice uh, such uh, you know uh, initiatives well, well we can look at it from two perspectives abdullahi the first perspective is what if it is illegal for government to sponsor you to go on abroad acquire new knowledge and refuse to come back we are supporting government if government makes finding and realizes there are a lot of people who have supposed to be who have finished their, in their, their 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 fellowship abroad and refuse to come back and teach here necessary action should be taken against them that's one side secondly people that are from the other angle people that are staying in nigeria people like me have not gone to abroad for instance to learn to study i study here in nigeria then what benefit am i getting from government for studying in nigeria okay so sometimes it is because of um the phobia of i've got i've gotten new knowledge i've learned how to use new machines but if i come back to nigeria those machines are not there in nigeria those things that are supposed to come and teach them, they will not understand because government is not ready to make it. So sometimes that is the reason why they refuse not to come. However, we cannot we cannot support illegality. People that whatever it is, once you finish your study, you are expected, you are expected to come back to Nigeria and begin to impact the new knowledge you got in Nigeria. That's why the fact that you are going to be embarrassed because those things that you learn, you cannot be using them here in Nigeria. All right, uh, we're going to have to leave it here for now, Dr. El Maudier. I'm very sure. Your students appreciate the fact that, that you have not japped yet. And uh, we do appreciate uh, the commitment to stick around until a solution uh, <laughs> is reached. Thank you very much for joining us on the News Hour tonight. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody. Now, uh, to other stories, the Dangote refinery is set to receive the first shipment of crude oil ahead of commencement of operations. The arrival uh, signals a significant achievement for the country's oil industry as the long-awaited $20 billion plant comes on stream. It was learned that Otis Tanker carrying 950,000 barrel cargo of Nigeria's Agbami crude set sail on December 6 as is, and is en route to Lekki, the nearest land port to Angote's offshore crude uh, receiving terminal. Now, the tanker chartered by state-owned Nigeria's a state-owned Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited is the first of Nangote's initial crude supplies as the giant new plant starts to ramp up operations, West African oil as West African oil traders say. Now, the tanker's estimated arrival time is December 7, signaling the commencement of crude supplies for the refinery's operations. The refinery was officially commissioned by former President Muhammadu Buhari in May, amidst expectations, experts have raised concerns about the availability of crude oil to service the refinery amidst low production output in Nigeria. The NNPC owns a 20% stake in Dangote Refinery and is, as it recently entered into an agreement to supply 6 million barrels of crude oil as free stock to the refinery in December, aiming to jumpstart operations. Now, for more business, uh, let's join Chiamaka Umwafo for the latest. The Nigerian Interbank Settlement System, PLC, NIBSS, has issued a secular instructing banks in the country to remove all financial institutions who do not accept deposits from their NIP fund transfer routes. Super agents, payment solution service providers, and switching firms are examples of non-deposit-taking financial institutions. The NIP fund transfer channels consist of web and internet platforms, POS, ATMs, mobile banking apps, and USSD. The circular also made it clear that although these financial institutions would no longer be able to receive inflows, they may still handle outflows as bank inflows. Enforcing this policy will ensure that fintechs operating without a banking license are removed from banks' fund transfer channels. 
The exchange rate for cargo clearance has been changed by the Nigerian Customs Service and CS from 783 naira to a dollar to 952 naira to a dollar, indicating a 22.8% increase. This increase comes just three weeks after the rate was increased from 757 naira to a dollar to 783 naira to a dollar. According to the Customs Service's single window trade portal run by the federal government, the previous exchange rate of 783 naira 17 kaba to the USD was revised increase to 951 naira 94 kaba. Prior to imported cargoes being released from the ports, duties are levied by the Nigerian Customs Service. These fees are based on the harmonized commodities and coding system, which varies from 5% to 35%. The service stated that during the first half of this year, these tariffs and levies generated an average monthly collection of 202 billion naira. Travelers are lamenting the soaring cost of domestic airline operators' tickets and some of the country's chosen routes. According to reports, economy class tickets and some of the monopolized routes now cost over 250,000 naira per way, with return tickets selling for over 500,000 naira. Checks show that travellers from Abuja to the same destination may pay more, in contrast to the past when airline tickets were only expensive from the Lagos route to other parts of the south. And that's it on Business News. I am Chiamaka. Let's take a look at developments on the international scene now. Sierra Leone police have summoned former President Ernest Baikoroma for questioning as part of their investigations into a failed coup attempt on November 26, according to the Information Ministry. In a statement on Thursday, the Information Minister, Cheno Ba, said Koroma is invited to report to the headquarters of the Criminal Investigations Department in Freetown within 24 hours. Koroma, in a statement calling on the public to remain calm, says he would honor the invitation even as he stands ready to support the police investigations to the fullest. Gunmen attacked a military barracks, a prison and other locations in Sierra Leone last month, freeing about 2,200 inmates and killing more than 20 people in what the authorities say afterwards was an attempt to overthrow the government. The government said... The failed coup attempt was led mostly by a former president's bodyguard. Now, Koroma condemned the attacks in a statement shortly after it happened. So far, 71 people have been arrested in the context of the ongoing investigations, including 45 serving military officers, 7 police officers and 13 civilians. Israeli troops on Thursday battled Hamas militants in the heart of southern Gaza's main city, where a suspected mastermind of the October 7 attack is believed to be hiding while pressing their offensive across the besieged territory. Breaking through Hamas's defense of Gaza's second largest city, Israeli troops, tanks, armored personnel carriers and bulldozers rolled into Khan Yunis, was in already displaced civilians to flee again, according to witnesses. Hamas says last late Wednesday on Telegram, its fighters were engaged in a fierce battle against Israeli troops on, quote, all axes of the incursion into the Gaza Strip, as it claims they destroyed two dozen military vehicles in Kanyunis and Beit Lahia in the north of the territory. Earlier, the Israeli army says it has pierced defensive lines and carried out, quote, targeted raids in the heart of the city, where they found and destroyed 30 tunnel shafts. Now, let's bring you up to speed with the latest in sports. Here's Emmanuel Fashimi. Nigerian Super Eagles forward Victor Sime has made the final three-match shortlist for the 2023 CAF Men's Player of the Year. CAF announced the final shortlist on its official X handle on Thursday. Also for the prestigious award are Morocco and Paris Saint-Germain defender Akraf Hakimi and Egypt and Liverpool forward Mohamed Salah. Last year's winner Sadio Mani failed to make the final shortlist. Osimen is the femme favorite to succeed the Senegalese.
The 24-year-old led Napoli to their first Serie A title in the three years last season, scoring 26 goals. The striker is looking to become the first Nigerian to win the award since Umwanko Kano was named the best player on the continent in 1999. Meanwhile, in the women's category, Asisa Toshola remains on course to win a record extending sixth calf women's player of the year award. Oshola was among the three players who made the final shortlist for the women's player of the year award as announced by Confederation of African Football on Thursday. The Barcelona Feminista became the first woman to claim the award for a record fifth time in 2022. The 27-year-old played a key role in Barcelona Feminist UEFA Women's Champions League success last season. South Africa's Tembe Gatlana and Zambia's Barbara Banda are the other players in contention for the award. Gatlana, who plays for American side Racing Luz V Football Club, won the award in 2018. The winner will be revealed at the CAF Awards Gala Night on Monday, December 11, 2023, at the Palace de Congress, Melvin Peak, Marrakech, Morocco. The Super Eagles of Nigeria will take part in three nation tournaments as part of their preparations for the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations. Burkina Faso and Democratic Republic of Congo are the two other countries that will be part of the competition. The tournament will take place in United Arab Emirates, UAE, where the Super Eagles will also camp ahead of the AFCON. Burkina Faso and DRC are among the 24 countries that will take part in the 2023 AFCON finals. The pre-AFCON tourney will take place in January 2024. Cote d'Ivoire will host the AFCON from January 13th to February 11th, 2024. The Super Eagles will take on Equatorial Guinea in their opening game on January 14. Two-time champion Rafael Nadal has been included on the entry list for the Australian Open after nearly a year out with injury, while Nikigios looks set to miss the tournament in January. Nadal has been out of action since injuring his hip flexor at the last Australian Open. Well, that's the size of our bulletin tonight. Thank you most kindly for joining us. We do encourage you to follow us across our social media platforms to catch up with more of our contents. Take a look at our website, trustv.com, for the latest news. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. For myself and the rest of the team, thank you for joining us tonight and good night. Daily Trust News Center, this is the News Hour.